In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This might seem a little random to you, but in my world, nothing is random. I've been reading a book that was on our bookshelf that I didn't know anything about until I saw it. It's this book, Escape from Camp 14, about a man named Shin who was born into slavery in North Korea, a North Korean. They enslaved their own people in a labor camp where he was born to live, eat, sleep, work, be tortured, be tormented, and die. And he was treated like basically a draft animal, always hungry and all kinds of things. He escaped some time ago, a few years ago, and went into North China, into South China, and there's a lot of Koreans there. It was very improbable, his escape. It's a pretty interesting story, actually, but it's a terrible story about how he was raised and about the, the inhumanity of man. So he goes into China, and that's this is what I want to talk to you about, an incident there. That really just, I just kept thinking about it when I read about it actually two or three days ago. So there were a lot of Koreans in, in North China, or South China, excuse me, in that mountainous area and at the border, or there are Chinese who speak Korean because there's so many Korean defectors because the country can't feed its own people, it abuses its own people, people are getting out of there as fast as they can. So it's basically the world's largest prison. And he was cold, hungry, it was in the middle of winter, it's very cold there, and he would go to farm to farm and ask for work, ask for something. Sometimes he'd be given a little food and they said, get out of here. Well, he came to a pig farmer and the pig farmer said, sure, uh, I'll take care of you. I'll give you some money, uh, pay you in order to pay, uh, feed my pigs. Of course, the amount that he paid him was probably, you know, a 20th of what he should have paid him. But Shin had a place to stay. He could be warm. He could eat meat, which they never had in Korea. And he could fill his belly and he worked hard from dawn till late at night sometimes. But he was happy because he was accustomed to that level of, of working. But the farmer was taking advantage of him. So what appeared to be a kindness on the farmer's part was not a kindness, it was a business decision. Now the farmer did help him with, uh, he had some wounds that he had gotten from going through the electrical fence. And the electrical fence, by the way, was designed to kill, not just a shock. So he and an accomplice went out and the accomplice died. And because the accomplice died, actually, he was able to climb over his body and actually survive. But he had terrible burns. And the farmer got antibiotics for him, got him very warm clothes. And he was taking care of him in terms of those things. But the farmer had a mistress and he was a pig farmer who liked cheap labor. And when the soldiers came around, he told them, just act like you're dumb and mute and you'll, you know, we'll, you'll be fine. And that's what he did. And he worked there about a month and he was just very happy because he was filling his belly. That's what really mattered to him. And the farmer was getting super, super cheap labor. But there were North Korean defectors all over the countryside. And he met some of them in the woods as he was doing something. And they were freezing, of course, and they were hungry, of course. And he brought them to the house and asked if they could stay a little while. The farmer was not happy, not happy at all. And he allowed them to stay. But then in a couple of days, he kicked them out and said, yeah, everybody go. And including Shin. So this farmer didn't care about Shin. He cared about pig farming and a mistress. And his kindness was not kindness. His kindness was just self-interest. And I've been thinking about this for several days. How are we going to be saved if we are only concerned about so-called number one? If we are full of these petty dishonesties, small and large, and if we're always concerned for ourselves, and if our kindness has an agenda to it, we can't be saved if we do that. And make no mistake, supposed Christians are doing this kind of stuff every day. We're just living oftentimes worse than the animals. Now, maybe we can't have noetic prayer, or maybe we don't go to church as much as we should, or we don't always keep the fast or something. But if you can't be kind to people, you're dead, dead. 
You're just a walking corpse if you cannot be kind to people without expecting something in return. So we should be kind. We should be honest. If we can't do those things, we're dead. And I've been just thinking about this since uh, I read about it. And I thought I'd just go ahead and make a random video about it. We're Christians. We have to act at least like people, don't we? We have to be kind to people. We have to pray for others. We have to just not say bad things about others and climb the corporate ladder and, and, and always be interested in ourselves. If we can't do those basic things, then how can we expect that God is our Father? Because we're not acting like a son or a daughter. So if you have trouble with sin, you know, I'm not that concerned. I'm not that concerned. If you have trouble with being a decent human being, then you're dead. So God help us to be kind, to be honest. God bless you.